Okay, welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Kling. And today's topic, oh, I forgot to say I'm not affiliated with the College Board. Um, today's topic is box plots and outliers. <clears throat> Pretty simple topic, actually. Um, a box plot looks like this. I'll just sketch one out here. Let's do it like this. Okay, and there are five lines to notice. The, this line will be the minimum value. This line will be something called the first quartile. This will be called the median. This will be the third quartile. And this will be the maximum. <clears throat> so, if you want to, to, so to construct a box plot, one of the things you want to do is arrange all the numbers from lowest to highest. So let's say we had a bunch of test scores. We'd want to first arrange them from lowest to highest. So let's say we had um, 29, 59, 64, 68, 72, 76, 77, 77, 84, 90, 93, 96, 98. Let's say those are all our test scores. I'm going to have here 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I have 13. Okay, so the minimum, duh, 29. The maximum 98. So the two ends are pretty easy to get. <coughs> the median is just the midpoint, and I said there were 13, so it would be the seventh one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's our median. And the first quartile is like the median between the median and the lowest one. So this is sort of the bottom 25%. So halfway between here and here we get this guy for the first quartile. And then <coughs> the median between this and the top will be the third quartile, which will put us there. Okay, so you notice how if we are counting from here to here, we go one, two, three, from here to here, one, two, three. So this is exactly, in terms of counting, in terms of rank, it's halfway between these two. Now numerically, 68 is not halfway between 29 and 77, but all we're doing and worried about is the rank of the different scores. Okay, so if we, and then we, if we were to plot this one, then let's uh, set up a scale. Let's maybe we can start at 25, 30, 35. Boy, I hope this works. 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. It's going to be too small. 70. So I'll only be able to sketch part of it. That's bad. All right. Okay, so let's move these by 10, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, and then we'll put 100 kind of close here. All right, so now we put these things on the graph. We put the minimum there. We have the maximum about there. Um, the median, 70, 77, the third quartile, 90, first quartile, 68, and then we can just box in the, the middle, the, the three middle points, and then draw lines out to here. And that's your basic box plot. 
Now let me do something else, which is to use a rule of thumb for outliers. So rule of thumb for outliers. And that there are a couple st steps to that. First, we calculate something called the interquartile range. Interquartile range equals IQR. <clears throat> all right, so IQR. And in this example, it, it all it is is the the difference between the third and minus the first. So the third we said was ninety. And the first was 68, so 90 minus 68 equals 22 is the IQR in this example. Then we take one and a half times the interquartile range, so 1.5 times IQR uh, is equal to 1.5 times 22 is equal to 33. Then we move, call, I don't know, whatever this number is, move 33 below the first quartile and 33 above the third quartile. Okay, so in our example, that means uh, the first quartile was 68, so 68 minus 33 equals 35, and that becomes what I'll call a boundary for outlier, for the outlier on the low side. And on the high side, <coughs> we have 90 plus 33 equals 123 and that's sort of the upper boundary okay so um, now we ask are any of the points outside the boundary so 35 is the lower boundary 123 is the upper boundary well nobody's higher than 123 but this person the low is below the 35 and the way when you get an outlier, you can modify the box plot. It's actually called a modified box plot. And I'll just sketch it. So we have our median, our third, and our first quartile. And in this case, if we, I put the boundary here as the line. So that's 35. And then out here, I'd stick the outlier. What was it? 29 was the lowest? Is that what I said? Is it the low? Uh, 29, yeah. So uh, so the outlier gets stuck at a separate point. Now, uh, to the right, we don't go all the way to the boundary because we didn't make it all the way to the boundary. We just go to the highest number, which was 98. Okay, so with this modified box plot does is it highlights the outlier or, or and there could be multiple outliers um, so again you have that that procedure for calculating an outlier you calculate the boundary and then you see if anything's outside the boundary so some quick uses for the box plot uh, if you see something like this where the median is way to one side or the other uh, in the box, that's a sign usually of skewness. This in, the example I have here is skewed right. That is the mean. The mean will turn out to be greater than the median because of the third quartile being so high, it'll kind of pull uh, pull stuff to the right. Um, you can also, you can, if you've done a modified box plot, you can s identify these outliers. So that's another use for the box plot. Um, and the other, another thing you can do is compare easily two different box plots. So if we had, uh, if we put them on the same scale, let's say we're 
you know, we're still doing test scores and we still had a scale of where 100 is over here and let's say 0 is over here and um, we had something like this so let's say this is this year's class and this is last year's class we would say the last year had a much higher variance uh, it may have had a higher median so maybe last year's on the whole did better but they had a higher we can see they had a higher variance they had a, a higher range between the first and the third quartile Let me put some whiskers on there just to show that I'm doing it um, so you can see that the range of scores was wider last year but they in general were somewhat higher than this year because you see the median moving to the right so side by side box plots can compare two distributions easily and a box plot by itself you can tell whether they, how far things deviate from normal so this one deviates quite a bit from normal because the median is way over to the left um, and you can use this outlier rule of thumb calculation to determine outliers. And I think that's all I want to say about box plots.